Number 7. SS Monte Carlo The SS Monte Carlo, a concrete ship with a storied past, met its final chapter in a dramatic shipwreck off the shores of Coronado Island on New Year's Day in 1937. Originally launched in 1921 as Tanker No. 1, the vessel underwent various transformations before becoming the notorious gambling and prostitution ship known as the Monte Carlo. In the midst of prohibition in 1932, the ship was sold to Anthony Cornero, who converted it into a floating den of vice with his business partners Ed V. Turner and Martin Schuweiler. Filled with concrete to minimize motion, the Monte Carlo ventured into international waters off the coast of Long Beach, California, where it operated beyond the reach of local law enforcement. The vessel's move to Coronado in 1936 marked a significant chapter in its tumultuous history. The relocation, intended to evade legal scrutiny, only intensified the mystique surrounding the Monte Carlo. California authorities, unable to intervene due to jurisdictional constraints, resorted to taxing the water taxis and ferries that transported patrons to and from the ship, attempting to undermine its financial viability. The ship's fate took a disastrous turn on New Year's Day in 1937. Anchored three miles off Coronado Beach, the Monte Carlo succumbed to the forces of a violent storm. The anchor lost its hold and the vessel, battered and helpless, drifted onto the shore in front of what's now the El Camino Tower of the Coronado Shores condos. Once grounded, the Monte Carlo posed a unique challenge. Since its operations were illegal onshore, no one claimed ownership of the wreck. The wreckage, partially submerged in the sand, became a haunting reminder of the ship's tumultuous history. The surrounding beach earned the moniker Shipwreck Beach, a name coined by a Coronado writer and historian in 2005. And today, the remnants of the SS Monte Carlo are occasionally visible during low tide, and sometimes during strong storm tides as well. Before we continue, if you're joining us for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button to unlock a treasure trove of incredible videos. And don't keep your thoughts to yourself. Drop a comment below and tell us what content you'd like to see next. Number 6. The SS Yongla The SS Yongla, a passenger steamship commissioned by the Adelaide Steamship Company, met a tragic end during a cyclone off the coast of Queensland in 1911. Launched in 1903 and built by Sir W. G. Armstrong, Whitworth & Company in Newcastle-upon-Tyne, the ship had a storied history, serving Australia's longest interstate shipping route. The Yongala was also the sister ship of the Grantala, which later became Australia's only hospital ship in World War I. On March 23, 1911, on its 99th voyage, the Yongala left Melbourne, bound for Townsville, carrying 122 passengers, including racehorses and cargo. Unaware of an impending tropical cyclone, the ship sank on the night of either March 23rd or March 24th. And despite a search effort led by the Premier of Queensland, Digby Denham, no survivors or wreckage were ever found. The sinking of the ship dragged 122 souls to their watery graves. The discovery of the Yongala's wreck in 1958 off Cape Bowling Green marked the beginning of a new chapter in its story. Now a popular wreck diving site protected by the Commonwealth Underwater Cultural Heritage Act 2018, the wreck is situated in the central section of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. The site is surrounded by a protected zone with a radius of 2,615 feet. The intact wreck, measuring nearly 360 feet long and lying at a depth of approximately 100 feet, has become an artificial reef attracting a diverse array of marine life. Managed by the Museum of Tropical Queensland in Townsville, the site is accessible only by permit, and activities such as penetration, diving, and interference with artifacts are prohibited. Today, the SS Yongla remains as one of the largest and most intact historic shipwrecks, drawing over 10,000 divers annually to explore its eerie yet vibrant underwater world. The Maritime Museum of Townsville preserves Yongala's legacy with an extensive display of artifacts and memorabilia, including the ship's bell. The tragic tale of the SS Yongala continues to captivate maritime enthusiasts 
and acts as a reminder of the unpredictable forces that can befall even the most advanced vessels. Number 5. The SS President Coolidge The SS President Coolidge, a testament to both luxury travel and wartime sacrifice, began its journey as an American luxury ocean liner after being completed in 1931. Commissioned by Dollar Steamship Lines and later operated by American President Lines, the ship boasted a sister vessel, the SS President Hoover, which met its unfortunate end in a typhoon in 1937. Built by the Newport News Shipbuilding and Dry Dock Company in Virginia, the President Coolidge and the President Hoover were the largest merchant ships constructed in the United States at that time. Both ships featured turboelectric transmission, with Westinghouse and General Electric providing the necessary generators and propulsion motors. President Coolidge, equipped with 12 Babcock and Wilcox boilers and powered by two Westinghouse 10,200 kilowatt turbine generator sets, offered an unparalleled level of luxury. With spacious accommodations for 350 first class and 150 special or intermediate class passengers, the ship also featured amenities such as saltwater swimming pools, a gymnasium, and a soda fountain. In the pre-war era, President Coolidge traversed routes between San Francisco and Manila, showcasing its design and breaking speed records. The vessel also played a crucial role in evacuating U.S. citizens from Hong Kong and other parts of East Asia as tensions rose in 1940. As World War II intensified, the ship was converted into a troop ship in 1942, serving in the Pacific Theater. The climax of President Coolidge's wartime service occurred on October 26, 1942, when the ship, featuring Japanese submarines, struck mines near Espirito Santo in the New Hebrides. Captain Henry Nelson, aware of the impending loss, grounded the ship, allowing over 5,000 troops to safely disembark over 90 minutes. The vessel eventually slid into the channel, resulting in minimal casualties. In total, only two lives were lost, including that of Captain Elwood Joseph Ewart, who posthumously received the Distinguished Service Cross for his heroic actions. Today, the President Coolidge rests as a protected wreck and popular dive site in Vanuatu, a silent witness to the bygone era of luxury travel and the wartime sacrifices made by both the vessels and those who served on board. Recreational divers explore the remnants of a once grand cruise liner, encountering artifacts, guns, chandeliers, and marine life, offering a unique underwater perspective on history. The ship's legacy endures, submerged in the bright blue depths of the Pacific. Number 4. The MVE Evangelia The MVE Evangelia, a shipwreck resting off the Black Sea coast of Romania at Costanesti, traversed the seas under various names and owners before meeting its final resting place. Constructed in Belfast by Harland and Wolfe in 1942 as the Empire Ship, the vessel was originally given the name Empire Strength for the UK Ministry of War Transport. The ship was equipped with a six-cylinder, four-stroke, single-acting marine diesel engine that was developed by Burmeister and Wayne. Under the management of the Blue Star Line, the ship embarked on its maiden voyage from Liverpool to Sydney in January of 1943, showcasing its role in World War II transport. Throughout the war, the vessel carried frozen meat from Buenos Aires to Britain and the Mediterranean, navigating both European and South American waters. Post-war, the ship underwent a series of transformations, changing names and ownership. In 1946, the MOWT sold Empire Strength to Frederick Leyland & Company Limited, renaming it Saxon Star. The vessel transitioned within the Blue Star Group, changing hands once again from Frederick Leyland to Lamport & Holt Line, but eventually being sold to Booth Steamship Company and Blue Star Line. In August of 1961, Blue Star Line sold the ship again to DL Street Limited of Cardiff, making another change in its journey. Renamed Redbrook, the vessel eventually found itself under the ownership of Hagif Compania Navaria S.A. of Greece in 1965, now bearing the name E. Evangelia. The ship's final chapter unfolded on October 15, 1968. While sailing in ballast from Rijeka to Constanta, 
It ran aground off Contanesti in the Black Sea, approximately 16 nautical miles south of Constanta. Declared a total loss, the wrecked ship now became an intriguing local attraction for the small seaside resort of Costanesti. The wreck, situated in Romania, serves as a tangible reminder of a vessel that journeyed through the waves of history, bearing witness to wartime voyages, ownership changes, and its ultimate demise on the shores of the Black Sea. Number 3. The MV Panagiotis The MV Panagiotis is a vessel that's forever associated with the Greek island of Zakynthos. Originally christened as St. Bedan, this coaster general cargo ship embarked on a transformative journey, ultimately meeting its fate on the shores of Zakynthos. Built in Glasgow at the Scott & Sons Bowling Yard for J&A Gardner, the ship launched on January 14, 1937. However, it wasn't until May and June of 1940 that St. Bedan etched its place in history during the Dunkirk evacuations rescuing Allied soldiers during World War II. The ship's exact contributions remain unquantified, but its pivotal role in this historic event adds a layer of significance to its narrative. In 1964, the ship found new owners in Greece, beginning a series of name changes from St. Badan to Merope, then Charis, and eventually Nikos in 1974. Then, in 1977, under G. Trevelis and Company, T. Katsaran. It assumed its final name, the MV Panagiotis, however, on October 1, 1980, the ship met its demise off the coast of Zakynthos. The widely accepted narrative suggests that the MV Panagiotis, laden with contraband cigarettes en route to Turkey, attempted to evade the Greek Navy in stormy weather. In pursuit, the ship ran aground on Zakynthos Navagio Beach. The crew abandoned ship to escape the authorities and local residents reportedly scavenged the cargo, leading to a shortage of official tobacco products on the island for a total of four years. Controversy surrounds the wreck's origin, with some locals speculating that it was deliberately placed by the Ministry of Tourism to attract tourists. Captain Charolambos Kompothekras Kotsaros, the last captain of the MV Panagiotis, has contested the prevailing narrative, stating that the ship was on a legal trade run. According to him, a storm and mechanical failure led to the grounding of the ship, causing it to be abandoned on Navagio Beach. The court papers from that time are heavily redacted, and the mystery surrounding the ship's fate persists. Regardless of the varying accounts, the MV Panagiotis has left an indelible legacy, turning Navagio Beach into Zakynthos' premier tourist attraction, an enduring symbol that captivates visitors worldwide. The allure of the shipwreck, combined with the beauty of Navagio, continues to draw people to Zakynthos, creating a lasting impact on the island's identity. Number 2. Edward Bolin The desolate expanse of Namibia's skeleton coast, with its treacherous fog and relentless dunes, stands as a testament to the unforgiving nature of the sea. Among the striking shipwrecks that dot this eerie landscape is the Edward Bolin, on September 5, 1909, this 310-foot cargo ship succumbed to the thick fog, running aground during its journey from Swakopmund to Table Bay. Now, over a thousand feet from the receded ocean, the Edward Boland is nestled in the heart of the desert, partially buried beneath the encroaching sand. The ship's skeletal remains attract wreck enthusiasts, history aficionados, and intrepid explorers drawn to its eerie juxtaposition with the arid landscape. Wind-driven waves of sand have replaced the once pervading ocean, creating a surreal tableau where jackals occasionally seek shelter from the relentless sun within the rusting hulk. As an unintended ship graveyard, the skeleton coast cradles the remains of vessels like the Edward Bolin, marking the dry desert end for ships and sailors lost to the tumultuous seas. The shipwrecks scattered around the Edward Bolin, some still within the ocean's grasp, and others reduced to fragments peeking through the sands, weave a haunting narrative of maritime tragedy and the relentless march of nature. And at number one, Nuestra Senora de las Mercedes. Nuestra Senora de las Mercedes, 
a Spanish Navy frigate met its fate on October 5, 1804, during the Battle of Cape Santa Maria off the south coast of Portugal. Despite the ongoing peace between Spain and Great Britain, the frigate, laden with valuable cargo such as silver, gold, visunya, cinnamon, and quinoa, was the target of a Royal Navy task force led by Captain Graham Moore aboard the HMS Indefatigable. Ordered to change course and proceed to a British port for inspection, the Spanish commanding officer Jose de Bustamante Higuera defiantly objected, citing the peaceful relations between the two nations. Outnumbered and outgunned, the Spanish flotilla, which included the Medea, Santa Clara, and Fama, faced an unprovoked attack. A single shot from the HMS Amphion, commanded by Samuel Sutton, struck the ship's magazine, causing a devastating explosion that sank the frigate. Unfortunately, 250 Spanish crew members perished, while 51 survivors were taken as prisoners. The wreck, akin to the USS Arizona at Pearl Harbor, marked an unprovoked attack leading to tensions between Spain and Britain. Then, in 2007, Odyssey Marine Exploration discovered the shipwreck, codenamed Black Swan, at an undisclosed location. Recovering almost 500,000 silver and gold coins, Odyssey faced legal challenges from the Spanish government, which considered it an act of illegal looting. Peru attempted to claim the treasure as well, arguing its origin as plundered by the Spanish, but legal decisions upheld Spain's rightful ownership. A court case determined that at the time of the wreck, Peru was considered a Spanish colony, granting Spain legal standing to the proceeds of the lawsuit. And in 2012, a U.S. federal court and the United States Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit affirmed the Spanish claim, leading to the return of the recovered treasure to Spain. The cargo, consisting of 14 and a half tons of gold and silver coins, was deposited in the National Museum of Subaquatic Archaeology in Cartagena for cataloging, study, and permanent display. An exhibition titled The Last Trip of the Frigate Mercedes, a Recovered Cultural Treasure, showcased the recovered artifacts from June to December 2014. Are there other fascinating shipwrecks through the ages that you'd like us to make a video about in the future? Let us know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to turn on notifications so that you know every time we upload. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.